Hi, I want to show you how to come up with an alternative to a histogram. A histogram is one of the default visuals we use to look at the distribution of data. However, sometimes we have an issue with bins and something called binning bias. And what that means is that the bins can show us different representations of the data as we increase the bins. So, I want to kind of show you a different plot, a little underused plot that can come in very handy. So uh, let me just show you what I've loaded in. I've loaded in my essential libraries, pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Save those all under the variables. And then I use the style 538. I loaded in a U.S. housing data set and then I created a histogram based on the U.S. price of housing. So I used the matplotlib variable PLT to create a histogram and here we have just labeled the X and Y and then we have the default distribution number of bins and we can see that top frequency around here, probably around 1300 for prices in the millions. So this is obviously a data set that has a lot of rich housing. Next, what I did is I wanted to show you what binning bias was. So we're going to look at three different histograms with the same data, and but changing the bins. And you can see that the representation of the data changes not necessarily so much on our x-axis because that data doesn't change that much but the frequency changes depending on the bin size the first bin size is only five bins and we see that frequency way up here around 2500 and then if we increase the bins to 20 even though it's still a normal distribution we can see the bin frequency has changed and furthermore once we go to 100 we can see the frequency change a lot so you might have a difficulty answering questions around frequency depending on how your bins have been numbered so i want to explore the empirical cumulative distribution function this is a great function to use and what empirical means is we're concerned with the observation rather than theory. So we want to use our data here. And this is usually used with binomial and cumulative distributions to calculate and visualize distribution. So I'm going to show you. So I want to show you how to create that. The first thing I want to do is just save my column of interest as data just because it gets cleaner. So we're using the price column in the data. So I'm just going to change and leave it as data here. Then I want an X axis for the plot that I'm going to create. So I'm just going to get the variable X and I want it to have a sequential order like we have here. So I'm going to use mp.sort to sort all the variables to least to greatest and I'm going to sort that data. Next on the Y axis, I want to have a frequency, but in this, in this one, I am going to use the data to help me create a probability instead of a frequency. So we want Y and we want to create a range. So we're still using MP, a range. And we want that range to be positive from one. And then we want it to end at the end of the data. So I'm going to use a length of the data. And then you remember with uh, a range, it only goes from zero and doesn't include the last value in this case it goes from one and it doesn't include the last value so we need to add a plus one next this will give us a range but then i want 
probability. So we need to divide this by the total data. All right, so that will give us our X and Y plot. Then what we want to do is plot this. So we want to say plt.plot. And what I want to do is I want to plot our X and Y that we just created. Then I want a line style equals none because I want to see each point of the data. And then finally, I want to make our marker a little dot so we can see each one of those. And let's run that. So now this is what we're going to have. We're going to have a cumulative distribution function. And what that function shows us is we can look at any point and see what the or the probability will be. For example, so we know that 20% of our data is around 1 million or less. So that shows us that 20% of the housing that we have is less than about 1 million. And we can go up here and we can see that 80% of all our data falls under 1.5 million. And then we can see that the majority of our data, close to 100%, which is the one here, is under about 2.4 million. So this is a great plot to use to see the distribution of your data. So where does the function part come from? The function means we can save a function and reproduce this for other data. So we would just take this part that we've created, initiate a function using DEF, and we can call this empirical cumulative distribution function. And then we know that's going to take, let's say, uh, some data. And then we close off that function and then we add in our information and our plot. And we can get a new data set. So I'm just going to run that and get a new data set. I'm going to call, I'm just going to get a new data set called DF2 and we're going to call equal PD dot read CSV dot avocado data set, which is going to give us some avocado prices. Put that in parentheses. Then we got DF2. Let's take a quick look at the head of that data so you can get a look at what we have. And then we have this information here, which gives us average price and the different formats. So if we have our function, and let's beef up this function a little bit. Maybe what we do is we add a label. So we know what it's called. So PXX label, uh, X label is called, we can call that a uh, data, data distribution. And we can call our Y label. I'm just going to copy and paste this to save a little bit of time by typing and change this to Y. And we can change this to We'll change this to cumulative probability. And how about we add a title and let's put that in parentheses to make sure it works. And let's run that. Now we have a function. We're going to use our function down here. So now we have, it's called ECDF and we're going to use that function on our data. So let's call it just DF2. We're going to add in price. 
So average price. And now we're going to run our function. So now we can see our function has run and we have all our information. We can see that the avocado price, uh, the top probability is probably we know that most of our data is going to be almost 100% is going to be under $2.5. And then we can say maybe 50% of our data is going to be under a dollar 50 so because this has multiple types I would like to loop through the different types and create a ECDF uh, variable for unique types so I'm gonna call this types and then we want to use and then we want the unique types so we just want the different types then I'm going to create a for loop. So for type in types, I want to use the ECDF function. So it's ECDF. And then once I have that, I know I'm concerned about the average price again and make sure DF2. We also want to ensure that we are using each one of those types types all right so we press enter and I think I made a capital when I didn't need to so it is called type so let me just quickly put the legend plt that legend okay now we have our organic and our conventional so we can see the distribution is quite different from those two. And we can see that organic is definitely more expensive because let's say if we want to look at this 50% mark here, we can say that 50% of our data is uh, about $1.75 or, or less or, or higher. And then if I wanted to go to 50% here, we can say it's about a dollar twenty-five and as you see here we know that all the data is for our conventional is under about two dollars while our organic is much more expensive around three dollars I really hope that helps you get a new way to visualize your data and uh, look at a data distribution using a cumulative probability function thank you if you found some value in this video, please subscribe and share.